In the last video we saw how to concatenate two or more strings in UiPath using the plus operator. Now let's see a few other different options to work with strings and manipulate them in UiPath. As I mentioned before, string is a sequence of characters. For example, my name Arun Nair is a sequence of nine characters. Four characters in my first name, four characters in my last name, and a space in between them. Each character has an index which is basically a number to represent that character's position and it starts at zero. This is called zero-based numbering and it is common in many programming languages like c -sharp and VB.net. Now let's see how to get a character at a specific index in UiPath. I have created a new project called Working with Strings and I'm on the main workflow. I'll add a sequence and call this sequence-master. I'll then add a write line activity. This activity simply prints any text that you write here in the output window. Now obviously you can also put a string variable or an expression here just like we did in the type into activity in the last video. So I'll create a variable by pressing Control K and set the name to first name. And in the default field I'll type Arun Nair within double quotes. The default field allows you to specify a default value, which means in your process, if you don't assign a value to a variable by some method like using the assign activity or reading it from an application, UiPath will take the default value if you have assigned it here. The write line activity is used only during development or debugging because once you deploy this process and run it using a robot, there is no studio, which means there is no output window. So this activity is useful only during development or debugging. Now, before we run this process, let's make sure this output window is always visible. You can do that by going to the output window and if you click on this blue title bar and while holding down your mouse button, try to move it, the output window kind of gets undocked and starts floating like this. You can also see these placeholders showing me where I can dock this window and if I move this window over these placeholders, it'll show you where it'll be docked. I would like to dock my output window right under this activities window. So when I get here, I simply release my mouse button and it is docked. Now it is going to stay here even if you close the studio and reopen it. So let's run this process. And you can see it has written Arun Nair here. Now let's say I want to print just the third character of this text, which is the letter U. The index for third character is 2, because as I mentioned before, the index starts at 0. So I just need to type the index number here within the parenthesis. And now if I run, you can see it printed the letter U. Now if I want to print the last character, all I need to do is replace this 2 with 8 because there are 9 characters including the space, so the 9th character is index number 8. In this case, it is fine, but in real-time scenarios, the value may change. It could be a different name which could have any number of characters. So instead of having a fixed value 8, we want UiPath to calculate the index of the last character. We can do that by subtracting one from the length of the string. So if I type first name dot L, you can see a property called length and this will give you the length of the string in the first name variable, basically the number of characters present in the string. So I'll select that and type minus one. Now if I run this, you can see it printed the letter R, which is the last letter. Let's replace Arun Nair with Richard Smith and try it again. There you go, it typed H, which is the last letter of Richard Smith. Now let's add one more right line. And I would like to write this first name in all uppercase. So I'll type first name dot two. And it, you can see a list of methods here. And if I scroll down, you can see a method called to upper. This will convert all the alphabets to uppercase. Similarly, you can see a method called to lower, which will convert all characters to lowercase. So I'll select this. And if I run the process, 
I can see Richard Smith in uppercase. You might have noticed that when I mentioned the first name dot length, I said length is a property. However, when I mentioned first name dot to upper, I said to upper is a method. In fact, if you just click inside this and point your mouse on this dot length, it says read only property string dot length as integer. And also it has this wrench or a spanner icon. So basically it says it is a property and the data type of the property is an integer. Obviously, since the length of a string is the number of characters present in the string, it should be a whole number, so it has to be an integer. On the other hand, if I click here, it says function string dot to upper as string. So what this means is that the to upper is a method and the output it returns is a string because when you convert a string to uppercase, it is still a string. I'll also show you other string methods that return output of different data types like integer, boolean, and array. You can also see that there is an open and close parenthesis after to upper. You will understand what that is in a minute when I show you the next method. I keep telling there's a method, although it says function here. So what's that about? Well, a method is in fact a function when it is associated with an object. Here the first name variable is an object and the to upper is a function which is associated with this first name object. And that is why it is called a method. If this is confusing, don't worry too much about it. Feel free to call it function or method, it doesn't matter. But it is very important to understand the difference between property and a method. A property is a piece of data about something. In this case, the length of the string. It's just a data about the string. On the other hand, method is an action. It can do something. In this case, it converts the first name to uppercase. Similarly, in the last video, we saw a method called toString, which converted an integer into a string. Now let's take a look at another method. In the first example, we saw how to get the character at a specific position in a string by passing the index number. Now if you want to do the opposite, that is find the index of a specific character, you can use the method index of. So I'll add one more right line activity. And if I type first name dot index of, followed by an open parenthesis, you can see UiPath automatically added a close parenthesis. And it shows me a tooltip on how to use this method. In other words, it shows me the syntax of this method. Here within the parenthesis, you need to specify the character for which you want to find the index. And that's why it says value as string. A character, in this case an alphabet, is also a string. So I'll type the letter i within double quotes. And you can see the method will return an integer because index is an integer. So that's why I'm getting this warning because right line needs a string and not an integer. So I'll add dot to string to the end. And if I click outside, you can see the warning is gone. Now this is called passing an argument to a method. Basically the letter I that you typed inside the parenthesis is the argument that you pass to the index of method. For some methods, arguments are mandatory. For example, this index of method cannot work without an argument because it needs to know for which character the position needs to be returned. But some methods may not take any arguments or may have optional arguments. For example, the two string and two upper methods don't need any arguments and that is why it is not required to type parentheses at the end for these methods. However, it is always a good practice to type parentheses even if the method doesn't take any arguments. So let's add them for the two string and two upper methods. Now, although Richard Smith has the letter i two times, the index of method will always return the index of the first occurrence of the specific character. So if I run the process now, you can see it returned the index of i as 1 because that's the second letter, which is the first occurrence. Now, this doesn't have to be a single character because the argument it takes is a string. So you can in fact give a word. Let me show you what I mean. I'll create another variable called sentence. And the default value I'll type, John is the tallest man in the group. I'll add one more right line activity. And if I type sentence dot index of the dot to string. And if I run the process now, 
you can see it returned 8 because the word the starts at index 8. Alright, so I hope by now you have a good understanding of methods and properties and some of the string manipulation methods. In the next video, we'll discuss a few more string methods and I'll give you a problem to solve by yourself. See you in the next video.